Hi, today in this recording we will see how to conduct a logistic regression using the software R. So I have a small data set, we will take it as, a, as an example and learn how to conduct the logistic regression in R. So there is an inbuilt data set in R with the name called empty cars. So we will just use it for our analysis. So I just invoke that data set and keep it ready. Empty cars is the name of the data set. What we are trying to do in this data set is to find out the type of engine which this vehicle has. So the dependent variable has a name which is VS. V a V engine or a straight engine. That, that is why the name of the dependent variable is Vs and we will try to regress Vs on the weight of the engine and the displacement of the engine. So basically Vs is my dependent variable and the independent variables are weight denoted by Wt and Another independent variable is displacement, displacement which is denoted by DISP. So VS is my dependent variable. It is categorical in nature. That means VS will take a value either 0 or 1. It is a binary outcome. Weight and displacement, however, they are continuous variables. So because in this case the dependent variable is binomial, I will have to fit something called a logistic regression. As we all know, we will go about doing that. Also. We'll, we want to find out that if I, after fitting the logistic regression, if I have a certain value of weight and a certain value of the displacement, I have to find out the probability of getting a val the value of Vs. So how do I do that? We'll just go about checking this. So the first is to fit a logistic model. In R, the fitting of the logistic regression model happens with the function called the GLM. So let us do that say model is the name of my variables is glm formula is equal to vs till weight plus displacement comma data is equal to empty cars comma family is equal to binomial. Just have a look at the format. Model is the name of the variable in which I am storing it. Weight and displacement are regressed on the dependent variable which is Vs that is binomial in nature. We want to find out how they are related. So we fit a logistic regression. The data set has a name empty cars and we are fitting a binomial family. So Next, when I want to see the results, I write model and I get the value of the intercept and the coefficients of the weight and the displacement. Here, it is to be noticed that my dependent variable is categorical. What we are learning, uh, running is a logistic regression. Therefore, these coefficients are the values of the logits, which is log of odds. We will come to the interpretation in a moment. Let us see a summary of the result so I write summary of model and then I find the result is something like this so this is the regression equation which I have run these are the deviance residuals the coefficient values and the null deviance the residual deviance and the number of Fisher scoring iterations we'll just come to their interpretations and I'll let you know about it before that a simple question arises is that after this fitting if I want to find the probability that a vehicle has a Vs is equal to 1. So Vs as I told you will take a value either 0 or 1. So Vs is equal to 1 means that it has a Vs kind of engine and Vs is equal to 0 means it is some other kind of engine. So I want to predict the probability that a vehicle has a Vs kind of engine given that the weight is say 2100 and the engine displacement is 180. So how do I do that? First of all, I create a variable that stores these values of the explanatory variables. So say I create a data frame with these values, I write weight is equal to given the weight is 2.1 and the displacement value is 180. So with this, I have stored it. Now what I want to do is to predict the value of the 
probability that Vs is equal to 1 given that the values of the explanatory variables weight and displacement are 2.1 and 180 respectively. So I want to predict the value taken by the model given that this, the values are stored in new data and the type is a response because this is a kind of a categorical outcome. So I get the value equal to 0 0.23. That means the interpretation is that when the weight is 2.1 and the displacement is 180, the probability that a vehicle comes into the VS category is 0 0.24. That means the probability of any vehicle having a VS engine is 0 0.24. So this is a simple example of how to fit a logistic regression and how to use it for prediction purposes. Now we come to the more technical part of it, which talks about these values, the numbers, the coefficients, the deviance. As you see here, there's something called the deviance residuals. There's something called the coefficients. We, we should know how to interpret these coefficients. Also here, there's something called the null deviance and the residual deviance. Now what are these? So let us first start with the thing called deviance. Now what is deviance? In our case, we have a value of 43.86 on 31 degrees of freedom. This value is the null deviance. What is null deviance? Now null deviance is the value that shows how the response variable, that is how the dependent variable is predicted by this model given that it includes only the intercept that is there are no explanatory variables in the model there is only one variable which is the dependent variable that is regressed on the intercept only so in that case the value of the deviance is 43.86 and there are 31 degrees of freedom now as the name suggests and as common sense implies deviance is a value which should be as low as possible so the more the deviance, the, the worse the fitting of the model is. So we should always have a model which has a low value of deviance. So from this, we know that in case I try to fit the dependent variable on the intercept only, that is, I do not keep any of the explanatory variables in the model, the model has a deviance of 43.86. So that is nothing but the null deviance. Null deviance means fitting of the model on the intercept only without keeping any explanatory variables. Now, there's something called the residual deviance. The residual deviance is the deviance of the model after including the explanatory variables. So we see that after including the explanatory variables, weight and displacement, the deviance has decreased from 43.86 to 21.4 and the degrees of freedom have fallen from 31 to 29. So because of including two explanatory variables, the degrees of freedom fall by two and as a result of which the deviance value has decreased. That means the model fitting for my case has become better. Earlier the deviance without any explanatory variable was 43.86. However, after including two variables, the weight and the displacement, the deviance value has decreased to 21.4. That means the residual value has decreased by approximately say 22 units with a loss of 2 degrees of freedom. Now we come to something called the AIC values. As we can see here, the AIC values is 27.4. Now what is the interpretation of an AIC value in this context? The AIC stands for the Achaic Information Criterion and what it does? It, it provides us a method to assess how good the quality of my model is in comparison with other related models. So in case I have a, a number of models, say four, five, two, three number of models in my hand, I want to find the best fitting model. I should choose the model which has the lowest value of the AIC. Now in this context, it is not a very important number to make use of because here we just have one model. In other cases, AIC is a very important and a very significant measure because it helps us to find the best model out of a number of similar models. So in those cases, if I have a number of similar models and I want to choose one out of them, 
the criteria should be the AIC, the archaic information criteria. The model with the lowest value of the AIC should be chosen and should be considered as the optimal model. So here in our case, our model had an AIC value of 27.4. Had we compared it against other models, all of those models have had different AIC values and based on that, we could have found out the best fitting model. Now, how do we interpret these coefficients? These are the coefficients. I have regress the value the vs which is the dependent variable on two explanatory variables weight and displacement and the coefficient values which i have received is 1.62 and minus 0.03 so the first very evident thing which i can see is that weight influences the dependent variable positively and displacement affects the dependent variable inversely so this is a positive relation, this is a negative relation. Now, as we all know, in the case of logistic regressions, the dependent variable which I have is logit, which is log of odds. That means when the interpretation, please be careful, the interpretation is as follows. When the weight of the machine or the weight of the vehicle rises by one unit, that is one pounds in our case, the log of the odds of Vs being equal to 1 rises by 1.62 units. So if I say that the log of odds is rising by 1.62 units, the odds will rise by e to the power of 1.62 units. So this is very simple, a little mathematical maybe, but the interpretation is straightforward. When weight increases by 1 unit, the log of odds of Vs being equal to 1 will rise by 1.62 units. That means odds will rise by a value of e to the power 1.62 units. Similar interpretation holds for the value displacement. For displacement, the estimate is minus 0.03. Now, what does it mean? When displacement rises by 1 unit, the log of the odds of the value Vs being equal to 1 will fall by minus uh, will fall by 0 0.03 that means the odds will fall by e to the power of minus 0 0.03 units so that is how these estimates are interpreted from the probability the p values these p values we can find out more on their nature as in, in terms of their significance whether these variables weight displacement they are significant or not in explaining the dependent variable from the null deviance and the residual deviance we have been able to find out how the deviance has decreased or changed after including the explanatory variables null deviance is when there are no explanatory variables in the model and the regression is done only on the intercept as in there are no explanatory variables and residual deviance is that when what happens when there is an introduction of the explanatory variables so with this we've been able to show what uh, we've been able to show a simple case of logistic regression we fitted the log logistic regression here with the glm function glm starts for generalized linear models with the glm function we've been able to fit the logistic regression it is stored in the variable called model so with the when i write model i am i'm able to see all the results the coefficients are visible a summary of the model shows all the important metrics which i want to calculate also after the fitting of the model if i want to make use of it in terms of prediction i can do that given the values of the explanatory variables weight and displacement i can find out the probability that vs will be equal to one vs is my dependent variable so with that i've been able to predict the value is 0.24 that means when the weight is 2.1 and the displacement is 180 the predicted value the probability that vs will be equal to one is 0.24 and then we've seen the implications and the interpretations for the coefficients and that is how a logistic regression is run in R. Thank you.